I love it when LaShawn gives us a countdown. She'd be checking. She's a time checker. She'd be checking. She'd be like, wait a minute. We got an early. Wait a second. Wait a minute. We breathing through. We breathing through only because there's so much to cover. Um, we started last, uh, first of all, uh, this is the Hey Girl Hey podcast on Urban Media today. We have a special guest, Lauren Darboos of the Darboos Law Group here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and she specializes in family law an award-winning family law attorney, correct? Correct. Thank I you. mean, you know. I mean, you know. She, like, <laughs> um, she specializes in divorce, child support, uh, uh, custody, so many different family law um, cases here in the Pittsburgh area. Her firm, the uh, Darboos Law Group, recognizes Pittsburgh's premier child custody attorneys. Uh, one of Pittsburgh's top lawyers as well. Uh, again, I was telling Lauren off mic when we mentioned her on the show, someone said, I've seen her in family law, and she is a powerhouse. I, I was it. like, <laughs> And I know Lauren. So it's kind of like, Lauren, Lauren? <laughs> oh, not my Lauren, Lauren. Yeah. Lauren. She's like, she does. you don't want to see me in court, girl. You don't want to, this is different. This is different. I know, that's so, right. Same. Welcome, to, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you so much for having me. You're way too nice. <laughs> oh, man. It's family. We, we family here. Uh, how long have you been practicing law, Lauren? 16 years. Um, wow. A month, actually. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I could tell some stories. <laughs> <She's working it. laughs> yeah, 16 years. And actually, my firm is celebrating our 10-year anniversary in November. So, super wow. exciting. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, really exciting. Man. So, you do specialize <laughs> in family law. So, what is family law? Like, what, what, what does that cover? So many things. Um, Custody, like you said, divorce, property distribution, support, alimony, adoption. Um, we handle CYF cases, mm -hmm. all kinds of really deep, really interesting subject matters. Mm. Okay. Um, and your clientele, they primarily men, women, like, or does it, I mean, it really doesn't matter. People who want to get away or get off of doing stuff, it doesn't matter, right? Like, I don't yeah, know. it's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. Has it increased since the pandemic? Yes. Really? Yes. We are busy. so busy right now. Um, mm -hmm. So many custody issues because, you know, parents are either seeing the other parent as being really reckless with COVID issues or they're fighting about back to school already and what to do in that department. Um, yeah. And a lot of divorces on top of it, you know. Well, what about the ones that somebody you don't like? Uh, what about the ones that get their kids on a weekend, and then the pandemic happened, and they get quarantined with that kid, like for weeks? I know they so, got to be going almost immediately. The family court got on top of these issues because they could see things like that coming out. Um, mm -hmm. and the administrative judge said, nope, you follow your custody order. Whatever was in place before the pandemic, you're still doing it. Mm. Um, yeah, a I lot know. of people were like, I've got my kid. I'm not letting them go. Well, mm. you have to. You have to or else you're going to go to jail. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are going to go to jail. I look, I'm trying to scare people. If you don't do it, you're going to go to jail. You <laughs> I wish I could job. scare people like that, but it's not true. <laughs> you about to lose, lose your, your job. job. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. That's yeah. Hey, real quick, there's a saying that says it's cheaper to keep her. Is this true? Is it true it's cheaper to keep her? There's, oh, so many people there's I also a saying about. that divorce mm -hmm. is expensive because it's worth it. Um, but no, I think that the emotional toll of staying in a relationship that's bad for whatever reason is never mm -hmm. worth it. If right. it's, you know, unhealthy because it's abusive or you're, you know, underappreciated or whatever the toxic toxicity of the relationship is, it's never worth it. Mm -hmm. I also heard it's not worth it to, to stay for the kids. Like, Absolutely it, it's, not. Yeah, yeah. There have been so many studies that show that 
kids are affected by a toxic household um, mm. more than two separate happy parents. Right. It, wow. it always It'll kills adjust. me when, when people say, you know, we stayed together for the kids. And when the kids get older, they're like, I wish you guys would have got divorced. Because we're right. living in a house yeah. with y'all. You oh, know. not helping us at all. We need to talk And then you wasted 18 years. Right. Yeah. They got, they got <laughs> therapy lessons. Uh, sessions now the kids going to therapy because they all right. kids up. that will never get married because of what they saw in exactly their house. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's more toxic staying in the household than it really is. is. So, um, yeah, I, that's just an excuse. It's just an excuse because you want to yeah. be there. It ain't about the wanna, kids. You just don't want to leave for sure. Um, do you have to file for legal separation first before you file divorce? Like no, you have to do a legal no separation, legal separation in Pennsylvania. Really? You just mm-hmm. do it. You get the court. That's it. Yeah. A lot of oh, people yeah. file for divorce and they're still living together in the same household because they can't yeah. afford two separate houses yet. And they need the court to figure out what's what their property distribution is going to look like. So, yeah, no, you don't even have to be separated to go through a divorce. Uh, yeah, because someone, <laughs> someone told me that. Someone told me that they killed each other. Yes, <laughs> it's I not. That, it's not pretty, but yeah. oh, <laughs> I heard that you had to be. I heard that too. That you had to be separated for two years in Pennsylvania before you can go get a divorce. And I'm like, wow. I mean, separated for two years. I that heard of used to be the case. About oh, I may want to say like two or three years ago, Governor Wolf changed it so that it's only a one year separation period. But that only applies when one spouse is not in agreement with the divorce. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Divor- the spouse who filed can move it forward after they've been separated for a year. Wow. When everybody's on the same page. It can move forward much more quickly than that. But if somebody's dragging their feet, that's the fastest that can happen. Yeah. Right. Right. I just so- think it's interesting when i when i meet guys and they're like well you know i'm going through a separation and you know and, and, and smash. Hey, you're still you're trying to fire. talk <laughs> like still- you're st- you're still legally married and if i'm <laughs> with you then that's adultery i'm not going to hell are you but crazy are women who I'm say well, he said he was separated he said you know he's like yeah, yeah but i don't like my wife <laughs> yeah. that's a cop out mm-hmm don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the banana and shell pipe. Um, before we uh, talk with the, address these emails, um, the uh, last segment, someone sent something, and there was a man who was paying child support for, I think you addressed it, though. He was paying child support for a child he rarely ever sees, and you talked about the difference between custody and child support. So just expound that a little bit more, and why is there a difference, and what should you know, and, and things like that. Sure. So if mom is withholding custody, like it sounds like she is, she's going to continue to do that without a court order that forces her basically to follow a schedule. So he should file for custody and that's separate from domestic relations where his child support is paid. Um, Family division has those two separate, separate issues. They keep it very, very separated. Um, so that, you know, child support is an obli- a legal obligation that you have to any child that's biologically yours, but the court doesn't deal with whether or not you see them um, on that side of things. Mm-hmm. That's a whole set process that he has to go through mm-hmm. and then with the child support thing. Okay. Okay. And wow. he probably won't because it's a ha- because he feels it's a hassle. So I got to yes. take on his So word. he should call our office and we'll okay. help. <laughs> We're so, gonna give you that information in a sec. Go ahead. So vice versa, I know somebody who um their child's father is barely around and she sued him for child support and he doesn't make any payments. He he'll make pay he doesn't make them like consecutively every month or however often she gets them. And um still like roaming around you know what i mean like he gets these under the table jobs he's moving Mm -hmm. out the state uh one time he's out the country Uh, how is that possible you know what i mean like like how is he still free you know what i mean not paying his child support and he's not in jail you know what i'm saying yeah it's really tricky when people are you know deceptive like that domestic relations should be on top of enforcement more than they are probably 
So it's really up to the support recipient to call them and say, you know, what are you doing to track down my child's father? What, what, where are we at with this? Are we going to get scheduled for a support enforcement conference? Like, just don't take it laying down that he rarely pays. It's, I think it's always more important to be noisy on your own behalf right. because your case is the most important to you. They're going to get to it when they get to it. Right. right. That's the unfortunate part because there's such it a is. large caseload. Um, they, some people take, a, take advantage of it and say, well, they'll just get to me when they get to me. And sometimes it'll sneak up on you. It could be months or years and next thing you know you shouldn't have lived in eating corn on a cop family with your new family and here come the it's you know true. what i mean <laughs> it's so, true though. all right we're gonna we're gonna get uh to some emails this one was a lengthy one lauren i had to chop it if you want to post it or whatever um i'm going through a nasty divorce three years in um it started with the pfa and now the time passed where he can contest it my judge was changed, and he continues to avoid filing inventory to move my divorce forward. My attorney is advising me to, to file a 331D to make him appear in court and start the proceedings, but I have nothing to fight over except their house. He's asking me to buy him out. Should I get an appraisal? Is this the right decision? I don't know what that means. <laughs> so that's a pretty complicated question. I think the mm -hmm. easiest answer is yes, get an appraisal. It'll give you an accurate value on the house. If the house is entirely a marital asset, you'll be able to figure out what equity is there based on the appraisal. Um, <clears throat> and then your attorney can figure out how to divide it up. If that's the only holdup and he's saying, you know, I'll agree, then that's great. And that's pretty easy to deal with once you have an appraisal. Okay. And call her office. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. I'll see that. <laughs> yeah. um, email number two. My son's father has been neglecting to pay his child support. My son is now 17, will turn 18 in September. He's been in and out of jail and still hasn't paid up. I think this is your friend. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> I know he's supposed to get I know he's supposed to get a settlement from something that happened on his job. Can I take that? I know it seems petty, but he owes. <laughs> That's he wants all the coins. I can only imagine what that arrears balance looks like if he's not really paying. So no, that's mm -hmm. not. Um, depending on what the settlement is for, she should be able to get some of it. She should call domestic relations and ask for an enforcement conference. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. He's sitting there, got his little Nike Air Force, his little outfit on, and he's ready to go to the bank. He thinks he's set. He has like, no Whoa. idea. <laughs> it's just, it's just always, I, I've never been married. Um, so this stuff here, when people talk about like divorce and all this, and it's like, they talk as if it's a, a different person it, that they marry. And that's so weird. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you marry this person and you go through this whole thing and, it, and they change and ooh, it makes it scary for a sister like myself. <laughs> I mean, look at you rocking. I mean, even, rock. me and, and it, and it, rock. even with my, my situation and my situation, I, I won't say it, it, it turned out okay. Girl, you're going to fall. You keep rocking. I'm about to rock that hard. <laughs> you fall. The, the, the arrears was so high that I knew that I wouldn't get it. And so I said, if you take the arrears down to zero and put him on his medical, That's I'm cool true. with that. Wait, it was so funny, Lauren. The judge was like, I'm sorry, what? You want to do what now? <laughs> what now? What happened? You know you don't have and to I'm, do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to yeah. get it. And so, and, and it worked out. And then, you know, the relationship between him and his father, it, it worked out. And that's, that's bad because it had to do with money, I think. That is, but at the same time, sometimes if you just work it out, then, you know, and, and stop, participate, just communicate, participate, yeah. and stop being mad because that person wasn't the person you met or the person mm -hmm. you had the relationship. Everybody changes. You meet the representative in the beginning, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. You, just, you know, everybody changes, you know? Um, so you just gotta, you just gotta make things work because the, the person that suffers the most is the child. 
Yeah. And I don't think that people right. are thinking about that. It's like, oh, I'm going to get him. I'm going to take all his money. You will take all his money, and that child does not have their mother or father in their life. But you paid them. Right. You got a nice little fucking bag, and your child got in clothes that's too small. But, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had a relative that took her father to court for child support herself when she got older, and I was like, "We're like, girl, why are you doing that?" And she just wanted the opportunity to really just talk to him without him, like you know, hanging up. And the judge gave her that opportunity, and she was like, "All my life, all I needed you was just to come and see me. It wasn't even about the money, you know. My, you know, my mom took care of me. I just needed you." And it, mm-hmm. it was really, it was a sad situation, but that was the way that she got him to come to talk to her without mm-hmm. her calling him. And, you know, it gets to this argument and he hangs up. So she was like, I'm taking him to court. I'm like, you're too grown for that. But she did. And he showed up and the just judge was like, just to have a That's conversation. Wanted to do. And, wow. it, and it worked out because, you know, they, they developed a relationship before he went on and he passed on, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that was able to be said. You know, she was just like, uh, growing up, I, I wanted my dad. I wanted you around. And it wasn't about the money. I was taken care of, you know, mm-hmm. but you were never there. And he just, you know, said to her, he didn't feel right because he didn't have the money that he thought that he should have given. He didn't have it. So he decided to stay away. Mm, that was not good. It was and it wasn't good. good. It wasn't good. That's a, that's a situation I worry about. You have so many of these young men, and it's unfortunate, a lot of these young blood brothers, uh, are passing away since, you know, senseless violence or wh- whatever it is that takes their life way too soon. And they have children here, there, here and there, and they pass away. And these children are fatherless, but there's no support. If the child, you know, if the father, if, you know, let's just say the scenario is uh, he, he leaves you with the child, but then he has another relationship and has two more children with a new relationship. Maybe he gets married, maybe he doesn't. He passes away, unfortunately. But now this child, all the children no longer have um, a father, but in this new relationship, he gets uh, uh, life insurance or something like that. Is this child from the previous relationship privy to any of that insurance? Like, they're just, they're just ass out pretty much. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a legitimate question or maybe somebody's going through that. There's so many scenarios out there like that. Yeah. What do you think, I guess if he puts his name on the birth certificate. Yeah, I guess it would depend, oh. too, on who the beneficiaries are on the life insurance policy. Oh. Right. If he updated it regularly, then everybody should be good. And if he forgot about it, then that's the problem. But a yeah. little day-day. Thank you day-day. much. A little day-day. A little ting-ting. 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 A little ting-ting. Uh, my daughter's father hadn't paid child support in years. He's my ex-husband. He remarried, still has no relationship with his kids, our kids. For years, I have uh, only received a few dollars here and there, but recently I got his stimulus check. Uh-huh. He's been calling my phone asking for his money. Do I give it to him? It came nope. from the court. Nope. No, that's nope. her money. Yeah. Domestic relations was seizing those stimulus with balances, and that's that's her money. <laughs> I, I, first thing I heard when they had said it on the news, those who owe child support, who's getting a stimulus check, will not get a get one. <laughs> Same goes for taxes. Like if you file your taxes, and I think that's why my friend's boyfriend, well, ex wasn't you know getting a legit job he was just doing under the table jobs you know because once you put in your social and stuff everything's going to pop up uh-huh. and it, go- it goes the same for taxes if you file your taxes and you owe child support all that's going to the mother the refund's you know? gone too mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So thank sweet. you thank you all right thank you. Uh, that was nice thank you <laughs> damn thank you the last email uh, my husband and I are in a nasty divorce. It's been hell on my credit score with loans and legal fees. Um, my score went down. I've been working hard to try and raise it thanks to COVID-19. Okay. Uh, he has more debt. He has more debt and feels I should pay half of his debt since I'm the one who served him with divorce papers. How would that play out in court? How can I be trying to make myself better and my kids' lives better when he's not doing his part? Uh, there's more there's more but for this what should i do um like you said custody well no this is support 
for divorce? I don't no, know. this, this is, is divorce and property distribution. Um, okay. it's, it's a really tricky question because a lot of people get divorced when they find out their spouse has, you know, accumulated all kinds of debt they had no idea about. That's unfortunately marital. Um, mm. Even if it doesn't have your name on it, if it was acquired during the marriage, that's marital property that the court can divide up. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean it's going to be a 50-50 split, but she's not entirely protected from that. So I mm. would encourage her to try to find as much documentation as she can to show that it's not marital property. Um, if he had it coming into the marriage and she didn't know about it, that's his problem. But mm. uh, she may be on the hook for it. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let me think because I mean, one day I do plan on getting married. Really, I do. Um, Are you sure after tonight? <laughs> I know. I'm, thinking, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm living the life right now. <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> I was like, I was about to say, well, you know, it would be nice to have somebody, but I'm like, well, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pass mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, like I do have property. I like I have my house and I'm about to pay that off. And if I do get married, I, I you know, if I, 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 maybe I might move my husband into my house, not unless he has a bigger one. Um, I don't know. I'll take your house with yeah. everything in it. <laughs> you know? Everything in it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, okay. Well, we'll talk about, it. you know, negotiate. But, okay. uh, <laughs> you know, and I'll move him in, in, into my house. And if something were to happen, to me i don't want him to be without anything but my house like well okay we were to get divorced does could he could he could if he lived with me for like property. 20 years and not and it's my house when i get you know i paid for it it's done and he moved in does he get the house if there's an increase in value from the date of marriage to date of separation he would be entitled to a portion of that but not necessarily, you know, 50-50 of whatever equity you have, because you worked on that before you got married. Right. Because so I, you're saying tear the house up, put some roaches in it, yeah. make it up to be damned, <laughs> increase the value of the house, he'll move That's out and then you fix it all up. Then clean it up. Right. Then clean it up. <laughs> clean it up. There you go. Because I, you know, I always I often think about that because I brought <laughs> property with my sister. So <clears throat> I don't want to, you know, like we have, we have property and we have things that we, have, and if something were to happen to me, well, I mean, I got a will and I got things taken care of, but you know, I don't want my husband to be like, well, it's mine now. It's she's, my house. Dead. Right. Know, she's dead. I took you should have a prenup then. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask can regular people and I, I'm going to oh, say yeah. we regular people. Can we get a prenup too? Oh yeah, definitely. It helps to clear up financial issues. Um, mm. It's a good thing to take them off the table so that, you know, you can get married and have be all about re romance and you love each other so much and you don't even have to think about it because you've got mm -hmm. a contract for if you ever break up. Oh, I got, I could candy Burris him. Woo, yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> yes. What you mean candy Burris? She made Todd Tucker get a prenup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's don't be like Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, his wife, and, <laughs> and Tracy Morgan, they like, give me the point. And she's a lawyer, too, so she's going to get it. She but, knew exactly what she was doing. She was like, I'm going to do it for is, is that, good five years, and then I'm going to take all the money. I'm going to take all his money. I'm going to have money. his baby. I'm going to have his baby. <laughs> that bitch, from when he got into that accident, she knew what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. She mm -hmm. said, is he okay? Cool. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, but but if I were to marry a man and he has more money than I do, and you know, normally you normally the men the men should be providers. <laughs> should be, be should be the man twenty twenty. So we have a prenup. And, you know, and I, I move into his house and he has a big house, right? And I'm enjoying it. I've been living there for 20 years. He died. I got to go out that big house? Oh, I don't know about that. You better watch you from well, the DMV. The prenup wouldn't necessarily deal with that. His estate planning should. If he has hmm. a dated will that includes you, that would pass to you as his wife. 
Okay, I'm gonna mm-hmm. talk. I'm gonna talk to my rich fella. <laughs> you need to date somebody <laughs> first. Well, date somebody first. Then you sit there about to plan your divorce. I know. <laughs> Let me find you a good one. Date. I got my plan. I might not be dating right now, but I got she a plan. Got a clean up ready. I got it ready. <laughs> <laughs> it takes Look. time. You got to do the steps. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're supposed to go front to back, not <laughs> back to front, not front to <laughs> back. <laughs> well, only in certain situations. Anyway, let's talk to you. You make me sick. All right, Lauren, we got four minutes. <laughs> four minutes. I hope you had fun hanging out with us. Absolutely. Uh, this, I think this is the silliest we've ever been. I don't know what's wrong with us today. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> I'm just trying to get my life right. I'm just telling no, girl, you. Girl, you're trying to get a divorce before you even meet somebody. I, what's wrong I'm going to settle down. I mean, I ain't, I ain't even been close to the right one. I'm just saying, when I get close to the right one, I okay. just want to make sure. You need to Lauren know. works with some lawyers. No, I'm afraid of lawyers. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Lauren, how can we get in touch with you? How can we find you? Social media, phone number, email, because you know they're going to be calling you, girl. Yeah. So, I mean, our social media is really easy to find on Facebook and Instagram. It's the Darboos Law Group. Um, website is darboozlawgroup.com. And our office phone number is 412-849-6831. And you can call that and get an appointment any hour of the day all right and let me tell you something she's in demand so i'm glad i got her <laughs> personal busy. number i could just be like hey sis i need she'd be like what's up girl? what you need that's that's what you need i told you top five you got to have with somebody top five man i'm telling you if you got any questions all right so thank you so much lauren uh darboo's longer darboo's is spelled d-a-r-b-o-u-b-e B-A-R-B-O-U-Z-E. Y'all going to be spelling it all wrong. B-A-R-B-O-O-Z. It's all day. No. It's all day. <laughs> That's it. We ain't talking about alcohol. It's star booze. Star um, So uh, before we close out, of course, Jer Jer, tell us how we can find past episodes, and then LaShawn's going to talk, talk about how they can find and follow us. Oh, yeah. Listen to past <laughs> of the Hey Girl Hey podcast. We are on SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn Live 365, Apple Podcasts, Anchor FM, and UrbanMediaToday.com. And Podbean. Ah, oh, Podbean. We are on Podbean now. Right, right, right. We've expanded. YouTube. We've expanded our, and YouTube. I like uh, watching Hager this on hey YouTube. Podcast. Yeah, the Hey Girl Hey podcast 2020 is now on YouTube, but don't go there yet. Pretty Kitty on your radio. I got to transfer the video. <laughs> I got to be ghetto and transfer the video. (laughs) It's funny because when I watch myself on there, I'm like, wow, did I move so much sometimes? I look like I'm on something. I'd be like, ooh, okay. Uh, You know. I'm like, oh my God. Like, what was, how much coffee did I drink? But anyway, you can follow us on Instagram at Hey Girl Hey Podcast 2018 or on Facebook at the Hey Girl Hey, at the Hey Girl Hey Podcast. (laughs) <laughs> or on the Twitter. On the Twitter. On the Twitter. <laughs> the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> at Girl Hey 2018. Or on MySpace or Black oh, no. Atlantic. <laughs> 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 or AOL. Don't forget on Hotmail. Hotmail is. Hotmail. <laughs> and then you can email us at the Hey Girl Hey podcast at gmail.com or you can call us at 412-709-6130 thank you so much yeah uh, lauren thank you so much we appreciate you being on the show hopefully thank you help you, lauren help. hopefully you uh, help. thanks you for help having me this was back. so fun <laughs> Girl, you are our legal our official legal team yeah <laughs> lauren next week yep, you got to come forever. on here <laughs> you'd be like <laughs> Sorry, our lawyer just said we can't say that. So uh, you gotta yeah. do it like what's what is it, Flo? With Flo, she'd be like, "Get out of here, Aaron! No, stop it! You got you gotta do the flow us or something." <laughs> They're like Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's a hey, girl, hey podcast, the Urban Media today. I'm your radio chick, Kiki Brown, and I am the chatter chick, Lashawn Tipton. And I'm your millennial chick, Jerry Tipton. And we got the legal chick, Lauren Darboo. 
<laughs> Strike a pose, Lauren. Lauren Darboos, our legal chick of the Darboos Law Group. That's D-A-R-B-O-U-Z-E. So make sure you check her out. We'll have all the links on UrbanMediaToday.com. This is the Hey Go Hey podcast on Urban Media Today. 